my workbench is a mess and that is mostly due to this Kenwood mixer Kenwood Chef mixer that only periodically worked um, it will work for a day or so and then then just not switch on or while it's working just stop suddenly and then maybe a few hours later it works again I took it apart and what I found this is a switching unit here is the incoming if I remember correctly incoming from the supply these two go to the brushes on the motor these two or these four pins actually goes to a small small connector with small thin wires going into the motor and without removing this plastic here I cannot see where it goes I can't see what unit it is I am expecting it to be some thermal switch especially due to the thin wires uh, you can test on here don't get any ohm reading when everything here was connected I even breached it out when the motor was not working I breached the first pin and the last pin I breached that out the motor didn't turn so I have no idea what it is there's apparently some expert in the UK that only does work on these machines I mailed him and asked him if he know maybe what it is didn't get any reply from him um, I can't find any schematics any drawings of this machine on the internet and that may be due to the fact that I don't know the model number I have no idea I have no idea what the model number is there's no little plate anymore that tells me what it is nowhere only thing I know is a Kenwood Chef and I think I saw a name premium or something somewhere let's just check here that's all that's what I've got that's what I've got to work with so wait a second <laughs> what do we have here model KMC510 hey <laughs> okay so what I'm gonna do oh I'm gonna look that up and see what that's what that why it goes to but that's not really a concern to me because I think I found the problem sometime during this thing's working life somebody spilled a shitload of stuff in here check the inside of this cover look at that now if I remember correctly it might have been me this machine's got an attachment on the top that you put a blender or, or a dicer or something on and you can make smoothies and milkshakes and whatever with this and I think I once opened it up at the bottom full of liquid milky liquid and it all went down in here and right below this fitting is the poor motor so I open up everything once I could not get any indication of what this connector goes to I thought let me open because I, I opened this I checked if I can see any any problems on here all the resistors test out fine there's no burn marks on the PC board nothing so I thought you know maybe this thing is not broken let's go dig a little bit, bit deeper and see if we can find something else what I saw when I opened the motor because also another thing I opened the motor for was to see where, where these wires go see if I can see what it is but when opening the motor I saw the brushes and I thought okay let's check 
the condition of the brushes. And I tried to take them out, and I couldn't take them out. So, what happened was all that gunk, all that milkshake, whatever it was, when it went into the motor, it got the focus, man. Damn it. It went into the brush holder, and if you check on the brushes, I'd clean them up a little bit already. Uh, this one you can't see. Let's check here. Does it? Look at that. Come on. Look at that. It's disgusting. These brushes couldn't move in and out on the brush holder. There's just no way. They couldn't move in and out. And this poor little spring. This one is off already. This poor little spring that is supposed to push the brushes in as they get worn out was obviously not up for the task of pushing the brushes that got stuck due to this milky crap that I poured into the machine by mistake. So trying to get the brushes out, I broke them, obviously. The the brush broke off right there the leads that go to the brush from the connector to the brush and it obviously happened on both sides now I thought okay I'm gonna clean this out clean the brush holders out I'm gonna get myself a new set of brushes put it in and see if it works but a set of brushes costs 450 rand now you can go to Google and convert that to whatever currency you are using, but that is a lot of money. 450 Rand, sure. That's probably about 30 US dollars at the moment, if I remember correctly. So, knowing that I only broke the, the leads, I went to a guy, because at this moment I don't have a soldering iron, and I just soldered them back on. Okay, but now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you this. I am going to use some thinners to clean out these brush holders. I'm going to use dry method. I'm just going to scratch these the scrap off without. There you see it comes off quite easily. Without scratching the brushes, I'm going to put them in, get them to slide nicely, and then I will get back to to you guys. Okay, I'm done cleaning the brushes. Brushes are clean. I cleaned the brush holders and as you can see, let's go in there baby. Look at that. Mm, that is nice. That goes in nice, in and out. Let's see the other side. The other side is the same. Going in nicely. The other brush. Same thing. Moving quite nicely. So, I was going to use paint thinners to clean this. I didn't want to use anything oily, as I don't want any oil or anything stuck on the brushes or the brush holder. Didn't have any paint thinners, but what I did have was this mentholated spritz used to use this in high school in the chemistry lab to get the I don't think it was a Benson brand this a Benson was of gas I can't remember we made fire with this still do sometimes okay before we go on if anybody has any tips on what else to use to clean the brushes and the brush holders um, it would be appreciated maybe I did it was something totally wrong I don't know but that's what I used if you suggest something else it would be nice okay so I already installed one brush because I did it 
started this last week already. Just wanted to, to see if I can still remember how to do it. So let's turn it around. First, I put the brush in into the holder, and then I put the little lug on. There you go. Now, when you when you buy a set, if you need to buy if you need to buy a new set, um, you do get these springs with included in the set. Um, here in South Africa, they need to order it for you because it's not on stock, but you can get it. Okay, so let's get that little wire out of the way. Now, if you look at the spring, you will see the one side. Come on, that's got a little bit of a bend there, other side straight. Now, this bendy part goes onto the brush. So that part that pushes the brush down. Here is the stud that the brush goes on to. So it goes on and there's a little lip here. I'll show you. So a little lip there and that fits exactly into that part of the spring. So we put it over there. There you go the spring onto the brush and then this part bends all the way and comes onto the lug. There you go. Now the spring is holding the brush in and as the brush gets depleted it pushes the brush onto the armature of the motor. So as the brush gets shorter, 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 it pushes, pushes, pushes it in. That will eventually stop when the brush is too short. Now I think this part came over next and it came over this direction. Let's check this clips here on there, clips over there, clips over here. There you go nice and solid back together again now it would have been better for me to probably clean this whole thing out I don't have time for that I'm not gonna do that I want to see if this worked or not so the motor fits in on the bottom bottom of this thing Push it in. Let's turn this thing around. So it will stand. There you go. I can't remember at all what direction this was. But I think I think this gap here is for the switch. Yes, so let's put the wiring as close to the switch as possible and see how the holes line up on the top okay so that's the closest I think we can get we get the holes lined up like that then it's on this side if I go for the next one it's gonna be oh, not so much further but still further so let's try the previous arrangement there you go all lined up and they've got these strange plastic inserts on the screws just to keep it there. Okay, go in there, baby. Now, something exciting that happened this week I got myself an electric screwdriver with 55 bits, and I think I'm gonna have these star bits now. I'm gonna fetch it, and it's sick. Excellent. Yes, I've got a bit now. I've got a bit that can turn that. Let's do the other two. 
Come up here, little motor. The last one. For the last one, I obviously lost the little plastic bit. That is not good. And what do we find there? Can you believe it? Excellent. No more hack job. No more coming back. This is, I didn't see this before. Check this large piece of plastic that goes into the hole. And that helps alignment on the motor. And I obviously did not have that with the nut. So, I'm very glad I got this. Got this back. Because chances are, I would have forgotten about that. And never replaced that. Not. Okay. Now let's put the cover back on. First in the front. Slide on the top. As I was saying. These clips, this thing clips on the top, Bloop. you can just pull it out easily. Now it clips onto this, so obviously the clipping part comes on the part that's a bit smaller. And if you turn this around, the clipping part on the side, so we have to align this one like this. Not very nice. Is it? How come it's not straight? What is going to make this thing straighter? Aha. Okay. Let's put these ones back in. A smaller one, I don't think this is going to fit. Okay, let's see if this thing clips on. It does. So, I don't know why then. I'll put it back on. So we have a flat surface. If we turn this thing around. Okay, now from here on, it's not that difficult. The switch has a cover. It's got three clips, so it can't be too difficult to put it back together. Let's see. One, two, three. There you go this way around one two three is it in? no it's not there you go it's in now I need to try to remember what is going on here I've got this black thing that I know fits in this way does it or does it fit in this way? Ah, you can't even see, can you? <laughs> Let's bring this all the way underneath here. This black thing fits in here. Some other way. This is where we're going to know where our motor should be. Or it can go in this way. 
So which way is the right way? Now, check here. If you look at this, here's an indentation. And it is almost the same shape as this one. So, that is how we know what direction the motor should go back in. Because this thing won't go in here like this. Let's turn around. Go in here. These two holes, this hole and this hole, is for that screw and that screw hole. And then we've got no space for our connectors, for our cables. The cable should be on this way. That's why the motor must be turned. I'm going to do that and I'll be back with you. And I'm back. Turn the motor a little bit and our black cover goes in perfectly. I don't think the switch is going to um, change anything. I don't think the switch is going... be bothered by that black thing. Is the switch in now or not? I have to check here. Oh, we can't because... Okay, let's push it a bit. Okay, zero is on zero. No one. Pulse. It's in there. Connectors are easy. Can't make a mistake with that. Um, this one comes on here, this one comes on here, and then our supply will go in here as soon as we've got that. Now I can't remember actually, that away, that away. I can't remember how I got this whole thing back together, but this is, this is, a, this is a part that we've been working on now. It houses a motor, it houses everything that works. Okay? The switch, everything. Everything working is in here. Okay? Now, we need to... This is where the, where the bowl comes. So, this whole contraption we were working on right now comes on like this. Let me show you. It comes on like this. Like this. So, I obviously just need to put it on and then bob your uncle. Here's our supply cable coming from the plug. This was not as easy. Let me see if I can remember. I think what I did was, I don't think I started with this one on the bottom. I lost my little black. black cover here. I have no idea what it's for. <clears throat> so then obviously this one came over. This one came over covering the motor and everything but if you see here it's only got a small hole where the cable must go in that actually connects here, connects here on, the, on the switch. So I must put the cable in first, connect the switch, connect the plug to the switch, put this through here, plug it in, and then we can cover this up. Okay, so now we can fit the spring in here. like that. Cable out of the way. Going down. I can start to align this. Okay, through the first ones. 
Okay. There you go. It's in. Now I can put the sliding schlong on. Struggling way too much. That's it. That's a lot better than previous. Obviously, went in nice and straight now. Okay. Let's turn this bad boy around and see if everything is sharp. Okay, now for the moment of truth. Let's plug it in and see if it works. You can see it turns up here. There you go, Bob's your uncle, thank you very much for watching, any advice please leave it in the comments. Before we close up completely, you must remember these two screws on the inside, that is the holes that we needed to, to line, up, line up that black cover where we had to move the motor again, that's the screws there. And then when you're done, completely done, where the wire comes out of this black box, black cover, there's a little box that goes over the wire there so it doesn't get damaged. And remember to tighten your, your stress relief. Thank you.